experiences. But the main categories are expectation. If someone tells you this is going to hurt, I'm going to you know give you an injection right here. It might hurt for a second. That's very different. And your experience of that pain will be very different than if it happens suddenly out of the blue. There's also anxiety, how anxious or how high or low your level of arousal, autonomic arousal. That's going to impact your experience of pleasure or pain. How well you slept and where you are in the so-called circadian or 24-hour cycle. Our ability to tolerate pain changes dramatically across the 24-hour cycle. And as you can imagine, it's during the daylight waking hours that we are better able to tolerate. We are more resilient to pain and we are better able to experience pleasure. At night, our threshold for pain is much lower. In other words, the amount of mechanical or chemical or thermal, meaning temperature stimuli that can evoke a pain response and how we would rate that response is much lower at night. And in particular, in the hours between 2 a.m. and 5 a.m. if you're on a kind of standard circadian schedule. And then the last one is our genes. Pain threshold and how long a pain response lasts is in part dictated by our genes. So we have expectation, anxiety, how well we've slept, where we are in the so-called 24-hour circadian time and our genes. So let's talk about expectation and anxiety because those two factors can powerfully modulate our experience of both pleasure and pain in ways that will allow us to dial up pleasure if we like and to dial down pain if indeed